Tommy gun! It has almost been 29 years since Jim Carrey cemented his status as a megastar in Hollywood by playing a character that most of the other A-listers would have turned down. Yes, we're talking about The Mask, the movie that changed comic book live-action adaptations in many ways and became a massive hit among the fans. While Jim Carrey went on to reach new heights following the success, the franchise never really moved forward. In this video, we will bring you all the current updates regarding the possibility of a sequel and also all the cancelled attempts that transpired inspired over the years. Before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us it means a lot. Thank you, and let's begin. Well. How it all started, The Mask 1994. The executive vice president of Dark Horse Comics, the original publisher of The Mask comic series, approached New Line Cinema with an ambitious idea. The studio was convinced, but they still needed someone capable enough to star in the lead role. After all, it was a daring project as the first live-action adaptation of what seemed like a pretty challenging comic series, and only someone like Jim Carrey would take this kind of risk. He had freshly delivered hits like Ace Ventura, Pet Detective, and Dumb and Dumber. And this movie would soon change his fortunes for the better. He would go on to become one of the highest earning actors in the industry, and the success story began with the controlled chaos that can be observed in his performance as he slipped into the character of Stanley Ipkiss. The direction was in the capable hands of Chuck Russell, and the movie also marked the debut of Cameron Diaz, who later went on to become one of the finest actresses in Hollywood. The movie tells the turnaround story of Stanley Ipkiss, who goes from being bullied and tormented to being blessed by the powers of the mask that changes his life. Life. All his repressed desires find an uncontrollable outlet through the mask's personality, and now Stanley can get back at his oppressors, taste some success, and also chase the women he fancies. Jim Carrey went ahead with his trademark style, and people even stopped noticing that the movie was not really an accurate adaptation. Very conveniently, the makers chose to omit the darker details and violence to encourage a wider audience, and the movie turned out to be a thorough entertainer that stayed with the fans for a long, long time. Why did a sequel take so long? The ill-fated cancelled sequel. Now, this is a question that many have been asking, especially because The Mask 1994 was an astounding success. Wouldn't the studio want to cash in on the popularity with a quick sequel? New Line Cinema was known for its love for sequels, and they were prepared to invest for a long run of the franchise. It was Jim Carrey who got cold feet about coming back for a sequel, and in 1995 he revealed that he had turned down a whopping $10 million to return as Stanley Ipkiss. He said that performing in Ace Ventura when Nature Calls made him realize that he found repeating characters underwhelming, and he chose the self-imposed retirement from the franchise on these grounds. As you can imagine, finding a replacement for someone of Jim Carrey's stature is not a piece of cake, and the studio ended up dumping the plants of The Mask 2 and went ahead with Son of The Mask instead. A competition where the winner would star in The Mask 2. There was a confusing goof-up when Nintendo Power Magazine launched a competition in October 1995, which offered the winner a role in the upcoming sequel. Everyone was confident of a sequel happening after the massive hit, and even Chuck Russell was interested in coming back for the sequel. A man named Nathan Runk was declared the winner of the event, but by the time the competition was over, Jim Carrey had made it public that he wouldn't be featuring in the movie. The future of the sequel was in jeopardy, and Nintendo offered to contest winner to wait indefinitely or take the prize money. He was wise enough to choose the latter and also got Pilot Wing 64 along with a check, which you can say is a good deal in the end. After the sequel was cancelled, The Mask the Animated Series was developed and it had quite a successful run for three seasons. Son of the Mask 2005, a movie that fans would like to forget. We wish this could be a called a comedy of errors, but there was nothing particularly funny about the destruction of a potentially promising franchise. Son of the Mask tells the story of an aspiring cartoonist whose dog chances upon the Mask of Loki before all hell breaks loose. He ends up fathering a son under the effects of the Mask, and this infant also had the supernatural powers of the ancient artifact. Meanwhile, Loki is on the lookout for his property, and it all boils down to a final clash of comical proportions. It is regarded as one of the worst 
worst movies ever made, and the statistics speak volumes about why the film should have never happened. The humor is painfully unfunny, and the dire CGI only adds to the woes of a poor script. The cast of Alan Cumming and Jamie Kennedy do their bit, but it is only an effort in a lost cause. It not only spoiled the image of the iconic 90s classic, but also dented the ambitions of the studios who probably shied away from a sequel after the abysmal box office collections. Revenge of the Mask, a lesser-known adaptation that deserves more appreciation. In 2018, a low-budget adaptation surprised the fans with a violent take on the Dark Horse comic series. This 35-minute feature told the story of the Mask in a way that many wouldn't expect after the debacle of Son of the Mask. The protagonist finds himself treading the thin line between a hero and a monstrous villain. And overall, the short film was still a better effort than the 2005 disaster. However, it was still not enough to make the studio take notice notice and work on something substantial. It is baffling how they never try to create a sequel or reboot of the original, but somehow the idea has eluded them for far too long. It was only in 2019 that we heard some strong rumors about the possibility of an upcoming project, although nothing concrete has been finalized to date. Can the new movie retain the dark theme of the original comics? We have already spoken about The Mask not being an accurate adaptation, and the original comic series was far from the family-friendly comedy and drama that we saw on screen. In the comics, Stanley becomes a serial killer and not the goofy green-faced troublemaker that you see in the movie. He goes on to brutally slaughter all those who wronged him before and even uses a bit of humor as he goes about his violent ways. All the graphic details and violent sequences were kept in the backseat for The Mask movie, but we would love to see an R-rated version in the next adaptation. Fans would surely appreciate the dark comedic tone of the comics reflected in the movie, and it is rumored that even the original movie was initially supposed to be more of a horror flick than a comedy. It probably did not bode well for the personality of Jim Carrey that everyone was familiar with, but a present-day reboot or remake can certainly include those elements. We have seen violent and offbeat humor work for movies like Deadpool, and if someone like Sam Raimi is put in charge, he could create a magical combination of blood and guts and comedy. Would it be possible to have Jim Carrey reprising the role? This is the million dollar question that all the fans have in their minds and the answer is more complicated than you would think. The actor might have refused the role in a sequel back in the day, but he might have had a change of heart in the recent past. In an interview with ComicBook.com, Jim Carrey spoke about his preferences regarding a new The Mask movie. He made it clear that he is not big on sequels, but he also added that certain movies like Sonic the Hedgehog offered the opportunity because the character is yet to be developed developed completely. Speaking about The Mask, he said that he wouldn't mind coming on board as long as the direction is in capable hands. In his own words, I would only do it if it was some crazy visionary filmmaker. What he considers visionary might not be what the studios have in mind, and that would be a massive problem in getting him to star in the movie. On the bright side, if the veteran actor can be appeased, he's not totally dismissive of the idea and would end up with the perfect sequel after all these years of waiting. Jim Carrey is not a stranger to negative roles, and even if the new movie has a darker theme, he is too good of an actor to struggle to fit in. Shoot him! The mask creator Mike Richardson has other ideas. What the new story and cast can look like. While there could be nothing better than having Jim Carrey pick up from where he left off in 1994, the creator of The Mask, Mike Richardson, seems to have something else in mind. During an interview with Forbes, he was candid about his vision regarding furthering the franchise. While he seemed pretty open to revisiting the beloved franchise, he said that he wanted a different person being The Mask this time around. He spoke about an actress, which indicates a female lead, and he also said about having someone in mind, someone who is well-versed in the art of physical comedy. He did not reveal the actress, but we have a few names in mind if the role indeed gets a gender reversal, someone like Jenna Ortega would be a perfect fit for the role, especially with the element of physical comedy involved. Purely in terms of action, the likes of Gal Gadot, Zoe Zaldana, or Mila Jovovich would also be roped in. All said and done, there could be nothing better than the man himself making a comeback because it is almost impossible to fill the shoes of Jim Carrey. The new story can explore different people wearing
wearing the mask, and it could also be developed as an anthology or a series. The comics by Dark Horse has left enough room for this because a young girl named Emily Tootle did don the mask briefly, as did a few others like Lieutenant Calloway, who possesses the mask after the death of Stanley. He tries to use his supernatural powers to help him in his investigations, but the mischievous artifact takes on a toll in his personal life. At this point, we're more concerned about the project being a given a go-ahead than the technicalities of the plot, and we hope to end the disappointment soon. Is Warner Brothers planning a new The Mask franchise? If the reports are to be believed, Warner Brothers is not just planning The Mask 2, but two more movies so that it becomes a memorable trilogy. They are conveniently ignoring Son of The Mask as a part of the franchise as they rightly should. Their plans are rumored to have Jim Carrey as an integral part of the movies, and it does contrast with the views of Mike Richardson, which we just discussed. Whatever be the case, the studio planning for a franchise is always a good sign, and if everything comes together, you can expect some concrete new news on this pretty soon. When can you expect The Mask 2? Given that the movie hasn't been finalized by the studios yet, the waiting period could be a rather long one. It is promising that so many of the people concerned are seriously considering a sequel, but even if they start filming in the latter part of 2023 or 2024, we cannot really expect the movie to be released before 2025. All we can do is keep our fingers crossed and hope that the long-awaited sequel finally comes to the rescue of the fans who have been waiting for almost 30 years now. Do let us know in the comments below what your thoughts are on the chances of a sequel also, tell us about the actors who you deem fit for the role and who you would like to see as the filmmaker. If you liked our content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. Have a good one and be safe. Thanks everyone!